Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. This broadcast is brought to you on this station every Sunday at this time. Thank you for listening. Good morning. Welcome to the Lutheran Radio Church Service. Now in our 87th year of continuous broadcasting, making this the longest running weekly radio church service in the nation. Our Lutheran Radio Choir is under the direction of Marie Zelmer. Your liturgist is Pastor David Peters of Union Grove. The choir will open our service by singing hymn number 117 in Christian worship entitled, O Lord and God, O Bless This Day. Our guest preacher this morning is the Reverend Emil Burgess, who serves as associate pastor at Trinity Evangelical Lutheran Church in Caledonia. Stay tuned as Pastor Burgess talks about Jesus' self-sacrificing love for us sinful human beings in his sermon entitled, Make Lowly Service Your High Ambition. On this fourth Sunday in the season of Lent, we worship in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be always acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. The choir will sing hymn number 117 in Christian worship, entitled, O Dearest Jesus. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart 
and confess our sins to God our Father, asking him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Holy and merciful Father, I confess that I am by nature sinful and that I have disobeyed you in my thoughts, words, and actions. I have done what is evil and failed to do what is good. For this, I deserve your punishment, both now and in eternity. But I am truly sorry for my sins, and trusting in my Savior, Jesus Christ, I pray, Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Lord, have mercy on God, our Heavenly Father, has been merciful to us and has given His only Son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Jesus Christ and by His authority, I forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Listen now to the word of God as the Holy Spirit inspired the prophet Moses to write it in Genesis chapter 37, verses 1 through 11. Jacob lived in the land where his father had stayed, the land of Canaan. This is the account of Jacob. Joseph, a young man of 17, was tending the flocks with his brothers, the sons of Billah and the sons of Zilpah, his father's wives and he brought their father a bad report about them. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his other sons because he had been born to him in his old age, and he made a richly ornamented robe for him. When his brothers saw that their father loved him more than any of them, they hated him and could not speak a kind word to him. Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him all the more. He said to them, listen to this dream I had. We were binding sheaves of grain out in the field when suddenly my sheaf rose and stood upright while your sheaves gathered around mine and bowed down to it. His brothers said to him, do you intend to reign over us? Will you actually rule us? And they hated him all the more because of his dream and what he had said. Then he had another dream, and he told it to his brothers. Listen, he said, I had another dream, and this time the sun and moon and eleven stars were bowing down to me. When he told his father as well as his brothers, his father rebuked him and said, What is this dream you had? Will your mother and I and your brothers actually come and bow down to the ground before you? His brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the matter in mind. This is the word of our Lord. The verse of the day is written in the gospel according to St. John, chapter 3, verse 16. God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Amen. Our second lesson is written in the eighth chapter of St. Paul's letter to the Romans, reading the first 10 verses. Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus, because through Christ Jesus, the law of the spirit of life set me free from the law of sin and death. For what the law was powerless to do, in that it was weakened by the sinful nature, God did by sending his own son in the likeness of sinful man to be a sin offering. And so he condemned sin in sinful man in order that the righteous requirements of the law might be fully met in us who do not live according to the sinful nature, but according to the spirit. Those who live according to the sinful nature have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live in accordance with the Spirit 
have their minds set on what the spirit desires. The mind of sinful man is death, but the mind controlled by the spirit is life and peace. The sinful mind is hostile to God. It does not submit to God's law, nor can it do so. Those controlled by the sinful nature cannot please God. You, however, are controlled not by the sinful nature, but by the Spirit, if the Spirit of God lives in you. And if anyone does not have the Spirit of Christ, he does not belong to Christ. But if Christ is in you, your body is dead because of sin, yet your spirit is alive because of righteousness. This is the word of God. Now let us confess our baptismal faith by reciting the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again, descended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Immediately after the choir sings hymn number 408, entitled, Christian While on Earth Abiding, Pastor Emil Burgess will speak on the theme, Make Lowly Service Your High Ambition. Mercy, peace, and love be yours in abundance. Amen. The word of God for our meditation this morning is taken from the 20th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew. We read, Now as Jesus was going up to Jerusalem, he took the 12 disciples aside and said to them, We are going up to Jerusalem, and the Son of Man will be betrayed to the chief priests and the teachers of the law. They will condemn him to death and will turn him over to the Gentiles to be mocked and flogged and crucified. On the third day, he will be raised to life. Then the mother of Zebedee's sons came to Jesus with her sons and kneeling down, asked a favor of him. What is it you want? He asked. She said, grant that one of these two sons of mine may sit at your right and the other at your left in your kingdom. You don't know what you are asking, Jesus said to them. Can you drink the cup I am going to drink? We can, they answered. Jesus said to them, You will indeed drink from my cup, but to sit at my right or left is not for me to grant. These places belong to those for whom they have been prepared by my Father. When the ten heard about this, they were indignant with the other two brothers. Jesus called them together and said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them, and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to be first must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. This is the gospel of our Lord. In the name of Christ Jesus, dear friends. For most of us, our childhood was sort of a golden time. A time we look back on fondly, a time that perhaps we wish we could go back to. Life was simpler then. Faith was simpler then. We just believed. Jesus even holds up childlike faith as something for believers to exemplify. But isn't it also true that the simplicity of children 
And it can sometimes get them in trouble. Sometimes you might hear people make jokes about the brain to mouth filter and well, how some kids don't have one. Or maybe have you heard this saying, we never really grow up, we only learn how to act in public. It's funny because isn't there truth to it? Take for example, when one child tattles on another child. Why do they tattle? Usually the tattler wants to do the naughty thing too, but they either didn't think of it first or they're afraid of getting caught. Kids seldom realize just how easily grown-ups see right through them. Maybe a big part of growing up is just learning what should get filtered out on its way from the brain to the mouth. There's some truth to it. We never really grow up. We only learn how to act in public. Well, in today's gospel, as we heard, the people around Jesus have a sort of brain-to-mouth filter problem. Of course, Jesus sees right through it and cuts right through it. He calls them and us to change the way we think about things. He calls us to make lowly service our high ambition. Now, just like one of the kids who tattles on the other, 10 of the disciples were indignant and jealous of the other two, James and John, the brothers. Why? Well, they wished they had thought of it first. They wished they would have thought to ask Jesus to sit at his right and left in his kingdom to fill the number one and number two positions of power. They wished they would have thought to have their mother put in a good word for them, like James and John did. No, they weren't defending Jesus' honor, but their own. Now maybe James and John thought they had an easy in with Jesus because he was constantly pulling them and Peter away from the others to go on private little jaunts. Maybe they thought Peter was the only one they had to beat to the punch. And like Peter, they talked big. When Jesus asked if they could drink the cup of suffering he was going to drink, they were quick to answer, we can. Had they already forgotten the suffering Jesus had foretold in great detail? How did he put it? Betrayed, condemned, mocked, flogged, crucified, and raised to life? No, their minds were only on the power and the prestige and the honor of being Jesus number one and number two. Jesus' careful response was not just for them, it was for all of the disciples and the mother along for the journey. He said, you know that the rulers of the Gentiles lord it over them and their high officials exercise authority over them. Not so with you. Instead, whoever wants to become great among you must be your servant and whoever wants to be First must be your slave, just as the Son of Man did not come to be served, but to serve and to give his life as a ransom for many. The point should have been clear enough. The disciples were thinking like unbelievers, like those who use their power to rule with an iron fist. Where does Jesus point them instead? To himself, who came not to be served, but to serve by giving his life for the sins of the world. True greatness in God's world means serving others. It doesn't take much for Jesus' words to convict us right along the disciples, does it? I mean, who of us doesn't want to be served? Who doesn't want control? Who doesn't want prestige and power? Who really wants to be someone else's servant or slave? James and John and their mother had quite high ambitions for their futures. How much higher can you get? If we think about our own ambitions, what are they? Do they have to do with becoming the servant of others? Do our ambitions have to do with us giving up some of our power and control? Do they have to do with us lowering ourselves to a humble position? Aren't ours often ambitions of power prestige and honor, even if it's the honor of being the most humble person or the prestige of doing such selfless acts or the power of getting people to do what we want by serving them first. How often is ours an ambition to serve? You ever notice that 
kids and teenagers love to serve. They like doing service projects where they can get their hands dirty and help others out. How is it that so many of us lose that when we get older? Maybe time's a factor. It's easy to become more selfish with your own personal time when you enter the grown-up world. Is it maybe also that we've been burned a few times after getting involved in service? Maybe we felt underappreciated, maybe even underutilized. There are lots of reasons why we are at times reluctant to serve others. And sometimes there are wrong reasons to serve others. The mother of James and John seemed to have service down. She had been following Jesus and the 12 around, serving where she was needed. She tried to do a service for her sons by asking Jesus to give them the top spots in the kingdom. And isn't that like us at times, that often our acts of service are for selfish reasons? The truth is we can't do anything without sin somehow infiltrating our internal motivation. Even the most selfless servants among us, even they can find traces of sin in the sacrifices made for others. Jesus was the only one who could say otherwise for himself. His selfless service was pure like no other. His motivation to stoop low and humble himself was pure and always out of his love for others. Never embarrassed to serve never reluctant to get burned, never deterred when underappreciated. Jesus exemplified the true greatness of servitude. What greatness that was to still follow through with his plan to save us in spite of us. What greatness to endure being betrayed, condemned, mocked, flogged, and crucified when it should have been us. It was Jesus' highest ambition to serve us in lowliness with his life, death, and resurrection. That divine life of service provided forgiveness for all the sins that condemned us. And does not his same life of service inspire us to do the same? And when we do, we realize just why true greatness is found in serving. Such blessing there is in serving others above ourselves whether that's in the home or the workplace, the school, or in congregational life. I'm sure we can all think of times when we've stepped out and stooped down to serve others and came away enlivened and encouraged, maybe even feeling as if our act of service served us more than them. There are so many ways to serve at at your congregation, even for those who don't get around so well anymore, even for those who don't get out at all anymore. There's something for everyone. In the church that I serve, we like to use the expression, everyone has one. Our encouragement is for every member to find at least one way to serve God and his people there, be it big or small. Just imagine how God would bless your church individually and collectively if everyone had one. As many opportunities as are out there, service really is about attitude. It's about a willingness to lower yourself to another person's level and then even lower. Service is about laying aside your ambitions of worldly greatness and then seeing greatness in the way Jesus sees it, the way Jesus lived it, the way Jesus saved us by it. Make lowly service your high ambition. Amen. Let us pray. We rejoice, Heavenly Father because we know that your ears are attentive to our prayers for the sake of your Son, Jesus, our Lord. Forgive us for failing to remember that greatness in your kingdom is determined by self-sacrificing service rather than by our own personal preference. Remind us every day that even your Son, Jesus, did not come into this world to be served by people, but to serve people by giving his life as a ransom for us and for all people. By his example of self-sacrificing love, move us to make lowly service our high ambition. Fill us with a spirit of self-sacrifice and loving service. Keep us from pride and envy and set our minds on the things of the spirit. Give hope to the hopeless, healing to the sick, and assurance of your gracious presence to all who are lonely. 
All this we pray in the name of our crucified and risen Savior, your Son, Jesus Christ, who has also taught us to pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with favor and give you peace. Amen. The Lutheran Radio Committee is pleased to offer you a copy of today's sermon by Pastor Burgess. If you'd like a copy, a free gift, or would simply like to keep hearing our gospel messages week after week, please write to us, and if the Spirit moves you, send a tax-deductible gift to the Lutheran Radio Committee, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. You have been listening to the Lutheran Radio Church Service brought to you from the chapel of Wisconsin Lutheran College. Your liturgist was Pastor David Peters. The Lutheran Radio Choir now concludes our service by singing hymn number 129 in Christian worship, entitled, Alas, and Did My Savior Bleed? The preceding service was brought to you by the Lutheran Radio Church Service, broadcasting radio church services every Sunday morning since 1928. Please visit our website at www.lutheranrcs.com to hear this service again. You may also request a copy of this morning's sermon. Please pray for this important ministry. This program has always relied heavily on your financial gifts to produce and present these broadcasts. Recently, we've fallen on challenging financial times. Although we've been blessed with your monetary gifts, we need to continue to receive $400 per week from you, our listeners, to allow our ministry to continue. Please prayerfully consider donating any amount the Lord enables you to give to this Christ-centered gospel ministry. Please mail your gift to the Lutheran Radio Church Service, Box 501, Brookfield, Wisconsin, 53008. Thank you for your generous support of the Lutheran Radio Church Service, and may God bless your day.